Welcome back. Oh, there, here we are. Welcome back to uh, the Cosmopolitan Hotel in beautiful Las Vegas. Actually, it looks like it's a little stormy outside. It was very hot earlier. We want to welcome you back to Splunk 2012. Conf 2012, this is the, the place where everybody involved with big data should be. If you're not here, we're happy to have you along via the Cube. We want you to join in uh, the conversation on Twitter, uh, hashtag data journey. Um, I'm Jeff Frick with Silicon Angle. I'm joined here by my co-host, Jeff Kelly, the preeminent big data analyst uh, from wikibon.org. You probably all know him. Thank you very much for that uh, lovely introduction. I appreciate <laughs> it. Um, and we're also joined here by uh, Marquise Montgomery. Welcome. Uh, so you are the security architect and team lead for corporate security. That's correct. Uh, at Cedar Crestone. That's correct. So tell us a little bit about uh, Cedar Crestone and uh, your role there. So Cedar Crestone's main business is Oracle PeopleSoft hosting. Uh, mm -hmm. We actually do some consulting. We get on the road. We help our clients do great things with PeopleSoft. Um, we also have a managed services offering where we'll actually host it in our data center for you and take it from beginning to the end. We'll do everything for you, keep it up to date, uh, add new modules, basically take a very complicated product and make it so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, we host over 700 environments of wow. PeopleSoft in our data center. So we are the largest integrated service provider for Oracle PeopleSoft in the world right now. Wow, so you, you, take, you, know, you take away some of that complexity, let, us, let yeah. us deal with some of that hard work and you use the applications up front. Absolutely. And I can imagine that's uh, some major security concerns when you're talking about all that data living off site and at a service provider like yourself. Exactly, if you look at an application like PeopleSoft, um, you might have upwards of half a million users using the same application. You've got multiple servers supporting, you've got web servers, you've got app servers, you've got many database clusters that you've got to deal with. And of course, if you're looking at something like a student administration system, that's protected information that you've got to make sure you have secure. So that's a big, very big focus for us on, on corporate security as well. Absolutely. So I guess following up on the keynote from earlier today, Mark Seward from uh, Splunk said, the, the key to good security is to think like a criminal. Yes. Uh, so <laughs> hopefully uh, you're thinking like a criminal, you haven't been down to the stores, there's a lot of uh, tempting jewelry and things down there. But so, think, so tell us a little bit about thinking like a criminal um, so, and, how, and what you do and how does Splunk help you with that? Thinking like a criminal, it really it's uh, a mantra that we use all over the security community. Basically what that means is that you're looking at the same stuff that the hackers are looking at because that's where you're going to find your weaknesses. And a lot of times, if you look at just the big picture of things, you're only looking at the perimeter or you're only looking at the high level stuff that everybody catches, you're missing the little details. And it's the little details that can actually hurt you mm -hmm. in a security environment. So one of the things that Splunk helps us do is aggregate all of our information from all of our different devices, all of our different servers. And then it'll help us do some statistical analysis bring out those things that we would not have been able, been able to catch otherwise. Because we have everything in one place, it makes it very easy for us to search through and do things from a better holistic approach. Instead of having an app, let's say you're looking at the firewall data, well, okay, cool, you're monitoring your perimeter, you see when people try to hack in, you see when people are knocking at your door, essentially. But you may not be watching the people who are already in your web application, for instance, mm. trying SQL ejection. And your firewall can't help you at that case. So pulling all that information together from all your different types of security controls and your network devices and your servers and your third-party apps, I mean, it really kind of snowballs. <laughs> right. And Splunk is actually really useful in that case because it allows us to basically take anything we want, put it in one place and report on it, set alerts, et cetera. So talk a little bit about kind of real time or almost real time or not quite real time because there's a lot of conversation about what is real time and of course at the end of the day if you take it down to the atomic level there's no such thing as real time, right? right. You got to break it down. Right. And, and also the complexity relative to the value return as you get infinitely closer to, to zero time that becomes difficult. But you know, security obviously you want to know when the guy's breaking in the door. Right. Right. Um, and the key that you have to kind of understand with security you can't win every battle. I mean, we have to be perfect 100% of the time, which is impossible. And that hacker only has to be one, right once to get in and compromise. So knowing that you can't be perfect, you strive to be perfect, but knowing that you can't be perfect, what's the next best thing? Being able to respond effectively and quickly. So being able to respond effectively and quickly means that you need to have that operational intelligence to know something has happened, notice that something has happened, and then be able to know where to go look to actually focus in and fix the problem. 
So incident response, we turn to Splunk almost you know, anytime we have an incident because all of our information is there. We can pin it, point it down rather quickly. I mean, you know, two, three searches in Splunk and you're pretty much done. Right. You've got your culprit, you've got what servers were affected, you've got basically what's going on. And if there's something you don't know, the information to at least know where to go look next is always an, another search away. Right. So what, you know, before, well, let me back up. So when did you guys start using Splunk? And I'm curious, because with all these data elements, it must have been, I imagine if you're trying to do this manually, it was a lot of code writing and a right. lot of scripts, and, and that must have been a difficult proposition, which I'm guessing is probably what led you to Splunk in the first place. Tell us about that. Right, so we started with a, a different product. I'll, I'll leave the name now, but we started <laughs> oh, with a different product. Oh, this is cute. We love the product name. Uh, well, that was before my time, and All I didn't right. have any personal experience with it, so I, I, I hate to, you know, hearsay or anything Fair like enough. that. That's okay. So, anyway, we hit, a, we hit a, a roadblock with that product as far as what we were trying to put into it and what we were getting out of it. Kind of a relational style? Yeah, well, it's just, it had support for some things and not for others. We wanted to do custom development for some things, and it didn't support that, mm -hmm. or it was very difficult to work with. Okay. So the decision was made just before I started with Cedar Crest on the move into Splunk because it had that flexibility that we really needed. Um, we have over, I believe it's 12 or 13 industry vendors, uh, products inside our environment. Dell, Juniper, Cisco, F5, Load Balancers, and then we've got all of our software products, so we're, we're running Solaris, we're running uh, Oracle Enterprise Linux, we've got both uh, Server 2003 and Server 2008, a very mixed environment. Um, one of the things that also makes us kind of unique is we have separate domains. So your regular enterprise corporate environment might have one active directory domain. Mm -hmm. uh, some of our tech people will know that. We have over six. Okay. So it gets a lot, it gets really complicated. Just adds to the complexity. Yeah, and so that product, we just kind of hit those limitations of, oh, you can't do that, you can't do this, you can't do that. <laughs> and so we needed to move to something that was just way more flexible, and Splunk was a product for us that made sense. Not only because there's a lot of support in the community for all of these different products that we have, so it's just kind of snap and go, but for the different things that we know we're going to have to build into the product, Splunk makes it easy to start from scratch and do your own thing too. That's great. Yeah, we're here with Marquise from Cedarstone. He's telling us all about security. He hosts it was 700 instances of PeopleSoft Over or more, so which far. is amazing yeah. when only just a few years ago no, uh, no large company would ever put their stuff in a cloud-based application. Right. I'm just kind of curious, from, from kind of overcoming that hurdle as, as large enterprises have been more comfortable with outsourcing uh, big pieces of technology, how have you guys as a, as a vendor waylaid their field? You're, you're a security guy, that's probably the biggest things they're, they're concerned about is, oh my yeah. gosh, how are you going to protect my data? It gets out, I'm in big trouble. Absolutely. Um, that's the number one question we get from our new prospective clients. And what we explain to them is, we've got a proven situation where our security is sound. We haven't had any breaches. Um, we don't plan on it. Not quite. Um, but but that, that goes, we've been in business for a, a long time, so that goes, we're, we're, we're getting stuff done right. Um, we come out to conferences like Splunk, we're, we're on the forefront of new technology, we're thinking outside of the box when it comes to securing our environment, because our environment is not only big, but it's complex. I mean, we've got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, two continents, two data centers, multiple offices. Um, it's small field, but a lot of endpoints, a lot of work to do. So uh, we just kind of proved to them that we've got it going on as far as security is concerned. Oh, good, good. And, and uh, data journey, right, is the theme of the show. And mm -hmm. we had the target guys on before you, you came on and they talked about kind of the classic use case of they had a little small problem to solve, they downloaded the application, they solved the problem. You kind of started in a similar type of jersey, your journey, your, your other tool didn't work well enough, you put it in. Now you've got it in and it's running. Now, we're, now what's next? What, what opportunities have you seen that prior to putting in Splunk and implementing effectively, you maybe didn't even know exist? So Splunk was brought into our environment to help us out with security. So we actually took advantage of the Splunk app for enterprise security. We're tying in almost everything, every network device, every server is talking to Splunk in real time. And in the Splunk app for enterprise security is bringing out those details of things we might want to take a look at. And it's been really valuable to us. The next step with Splunk is taking a look at some of the non-security uh, benefits that Splunk can offer. Um, Mark was talking this, mo this morning in the keynote about how 
all the information that operations finds useful, security guys find useful as well, and that works the other way around. The stuff that we're finding useful from a security perspective, our operations teams can take advantage of as well. Can you give us a for instance on that? Um, say for instance, I'm looking at a database, and I want to make sure that no one's breaking into the database, so I audit who's accessing the database and what they're doing as far as making changes. Well, if something happens to break, Maybe it was an authorized change or not, but if something happens to break or we run into an issue, the operations team, the database administrators can go back and look at that same information I've been monitoring all along mm. and see what changed. Another thing that's really useful is if you're auditing all the information across your entire environment, you can look for differences. So if you have one situation with one app that works perfectly fine, and you have a different situation with a different app that has some issues, you can look at what the differences between the two are look at what kind of maintenance happened or what, what changes were made or who's working on it or whatever you need to do and you can see the differences. The information is there to help you out. And Splunk makes it really easy to get to it, that information. I mean, it's a couple searches. You type in what you want, it brings right. it back. Right, yeah, cool. interesting. Yeah, so can we dig in even further into some of the kind of the real core use cases? What are some of the really interesting correlations maybe you guys have noticed uh, or you've discovered through using Splunk and, and that maybe uh, you never would be able to kind of get to before? A really interesting correlation that we're taking advantage of right now is the, the relationship between our intrusion prevention system and our firewalls. Mm -hmm. So uh, we monitor on both sides of the network, inside and out, and so the IPS is going off for stuff that was attempted, stuff that didn't work or something that might have worked because we weren't blocking it on the firewall. The difference though is the IPS is made by one vendor and the firewall is made by a different vendor, so they're not talking together, mm -hmm. right? So the IPS doesn't know if attack was successful or not. It doesn't know if it was blocked or not. It just knows that someone attempted something. In Splunk, I can pipe the information from the IPS and from the firewall. I can correlate the two together, and I can tell, well, this attack came in, but it was blocked by the firewall. So I don't have to worry about it. Maybe in a different situation, this attack came in, it was against a web server that wasn't blocked by the firewall. I need to see if I'm vulnerable to that attack and if I need to take any further action. So Splunk's automatically doing a lot of work for us off the bat by coordinating those two things together to make sure I'm not working any harder than I need to. Right. I can focus on the stuff that really matters. Right, right. And before you would have to manually kind of try to put that those two things together. Absolutely. Get it, lucky and hopefully find back, the relationship. It, and you have to bounce back and forth between the two consoles to see what's going on. And a lot of times, you know, there's nothing to worry about it. We got our configuration together and it's good to go. But then that one time that you miss it, <laughs> and something yep. get through, they get through the firewall, then you have to scramble to see what's going on. And Splunk actually brings that information to the forefront for me, so I don't have to do that work. I can focus on what really matters. Mm -hmm. So you talk about kind of the user experience when you're working with Splunk. Uh, we saw actually in the keynote, they showed some screenshots of earlier versions of the product and you know, how they've kind of, uh, from a visualization perspective, kind of improved the product over time. Absolutely. What's it like working on that front end? Uh, Paint a picture for our, for our viewers. What, is, uh, what do you see there? What are you working with? So Splunk is very simple um, on the surface. When you launch the web browser, you end up with a search bar, mm -hmm. like Google is the, uh, the metaphor that we always use. And you just type in the information that you're looking for, you press return, and Splunk comes back with events that match your search. Now, that's just the surface of what you can get into. Um, you can do all kinds of charting and reporting and graphs. Literally, any kind of statistical analysis you could ever dream of is possible in Splunk. They've got a search language. I think there's over 200 different commands for different ways for Splunk to take your data, massage it into a way that's going to make it more useful to you. Um, we've been using Splunk for just over a year, I guess about a year and a half, um, full deployment. And so we've been able to see some of the changes. Um, one of the more significant changes is their pulling back on Flash and using more HTML5. I think they actually last year in their major release made completely compatible with the iPad. So I can take my security dashboard with me on the iPad and actually not have to be right at my machine. Maybe <laughs> I'm out doing something else, but I still got my finger on the pulse of the security uh, landscape for my environment. That's great. So it allows you to really stay in touch even when you're not sitting right at your desk. And, exactly. And that's and of course security doesn't take time off. Exactly. Hackers don't take time off. It's 24/7, <laughs> 365. We've got to be on top of those alerts and making sure that we are responding to things that are of issue. And like I was saying before, it's already working so that I don't have to deal with the things that don't matter. Mm -hmm. So it, it just saves me time and it makes it, it makes it easier to work. 
So uh, I'd love to get your take, kind of a kind of a big picture question. So okay. you know, over the last five, ten years, even last two, three years, we've seen kind of this the term big data come getting, getting a lot of attention. Um, but you know, there is a lot of hype, but there's also a lot of substances we're seeing here at this conference with the, the things that Splunk can do. Um, you know, there's the Hadoop world, and there's other types of big data analytics we're seeing out there. Just as a practitioner, what has it been like to live in this world as we've kind of evolved from uh, you know an area where it was all about relational technologies and very structured data to all these types of unstructured, semi-structured data, and all the new possibilities that are available now. Well, you know, I've, I'm kind of recent to the industry. Um, I've always worked in a, in a in a field where there's a lot of stuff that you've got to kind of look at mm -hmm. and make some sense of. Um, so, in my opinion, it's always been big data as far as security goes. We know that you got to start paying attention to this stuff to be able to do anything with it. I will say that. It's really neat to have a partner uh, in the tech industry right now who is working really hard to make it easy to look at massive amounts of information and do something that is, uh, makes it easy to use and fun to use. I actually love working with Splunk because it's something that makes my life easier. It's quick to use. It's, it's not a, uh, uh, a pulling teeth product. To, <laughs> and some of the other products I use are like pulling teeth. So it, you know, I, can, I can comfortably say this is something that um, is actually a lot of fun to deal with. Um, but drilling down on your question a little bit more specifically, that's the way it's going to be. You know, um, going, uh, going forward, there's not going to be less amounts of data that we're going to have to deal with. <laughs> right, I mean, right, right. It's going to be even more than what we're dealing with right now. I'm sure no one predicted how much data we have in our daily lives. I mean, we're all carrying these uh, devices where you know, you've got the world at your fingertips, essentially. Um, some people, like me, have two or three of these devices um, <laughs> right, not, right. not too far away. Um, and being able to secure that stuff is the next big step. Um, being able to understand it all is the next big step. And we're moving forward trying to stay on the forefront of that. And I think that the, the best way to do it right now is one. Yeah, because I because um, not only for your own uses, but for the applications that you're hosting for your customers, all those yeah, applications absolutely. add more devices and more, more kind of channels of distribution. One thing I'll say that's uh, kind of interesting about um, what you just said is when you start paying attention to this data, you find insights, you find things that are interesting that you didn't know about ahead of time. Mm -hmm. um, so there have been more than one instance of, well, let me go just run the search, see what we got, you know, maybe I'll write a dashboard and, and, and fig figure out if someone finds this useful, and I come across something else that I was not aware of, that I'm really much more concerned about, that I have to go take some action on, just because I was poking around and looking at it. Right. Um, and many people don't realize how often that happens because they're not paying attention. Um, there's a lot of those insights, not just in security, figuring out how your website's running, figuring out why people don't buy this particular brand of your product, uh, figuring out why this server continues to fail every week and you fix it and it drops again. I mean, there's all kinds of different ways that you can use this technology to help you. It's just a matter of if you're willing to kind of put in the effort to take a look. Kind of lift that rock and see what's under there and you might find <laughs> things you didn't even <laughs> Absolutely. Think to look for. Actually, I guarantee it, you will. If you look, you will find something you didn't know was there. Well, that's a great message for, for our audience out there. So uh, we're out of time, but thanks, Marky, so much from uh, Cedar Crestone for coming uh, to theCUBE live here uh, at Splunks.com. I also want to, want to thank Splunk, uh, our sponsor, for bringing us here to the event. Great show. Talked to a lot of great, uh, lot of great guests, including Marky here. Uh, great uh, customer and some use cases. Uh, so thanks so much for joining us, and uh, we'll be right back with our next guests uh, shortly.